Hello, Warriors of Light, and welcome to my 16th weekly podcast. Today, I will be covering the newly released Dawn Trail benchmark and sweepstakes, Dawn Trail pre order bonuses, Dawn Trail release date, the upcoming Yokai Watch event, and the ongoing Final Fantasy 16 crossover event. Today is April 18th, 2024. The Dawn Trail benchmark is out now. Players can download the benchmark from the Lodestone website and test the limits of your computer while getting a preview at the various jobs in action. Warriors of Light will get a sneak peek of the graphical update coming in patch 7.0 and use the highly anticipated female Hrothgar, which is available in the software's character creation tool. Also, this benchmark will allow you to view your current Endwalker character in the tests. There are options for choosing dynamic resolutions, LOD on distant objects, and dynamic grass interactions. Players can also loop the benchmark and save results locally. Lastly, you can use the benchmark to share your results on the Final Fantasy XIV Lodestone website, Facebook, and X. Also, with the release of the Dawn Trail benchmark, players will be able to participate in the Dawn Trail benchmark screenshot sweepstakes. Players will need to submit one screenshot of either the character creation screen with your created character or your benchmark score featuring that character using the Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail benchmark software. Then, players must log into their X account and follow the official Final Fantasy XIV X account. Using the template provided on the Dawn Trail sweepstakes post found on the Lodestone website, players must reply with their screenshot the Final Fantasy XIV sweepstakes hashtag, their full in-game character name, their full in-game home world name, and their preferred prize. 1,500 entries will be selected to win one of four prizes, Bluebird Earrings, a Gaily Cap, Strife's Modern Aesthetics, or Noble Barding and will be awarded around June 2024. This event ends on Monday, April 22nd. So, moving on to my next topic, Dawn Trail pre-ordering has started, and gamers can receive two in-game bonus items, the wind-up Zidane minion and Azima's earrings. Azima's earrings increase experience points for characters under level 90. Also, Dawn Trail will be released on July 2nd, but early access starts on June 28th for players that pre-order now. So, as a brief reminder, I will go over some highlights about the new expansion. Dawn Trail will include two new jobs, Viper and Pictomancer. The Viper job is a close-range fighting style passed down by Turali hunters using two one-handed blades that can be combined into a single two-handed weapon. As such, players can alternate between pressuring enemies with swift strikes by twin blades, and then dealing mighty blows with their joined weapon. By calling on the memories of ancient hunters contained within its soul crystal, Viper can also imbue your character with additional power for a brief period of time. This Viper job unlocks with the Dawn Trail expansion, and having a Disciple of War or Magic at level 80. Players must also clear the Viper job quest in Ulda to obtain the Viper Soul Crystal. So for Pictomancer, it is a magical ranged DPS job that works in the medium of mixed ether, wielding a specialized brush to render images into reality. These images not only include creatures and weapons, but also landscapes as well. Because these images take time, the Pictomancer also has instant cast abilities and spells available during battle. Also, Dawn Trail will include a new playable race, the female Hothgars that hail from Ilsebard. Players can get a sneak peek of this playable race in the newly released Dawn Trail benchmark. In addition, there will also be a new limited job named Beastmaster. So, for the Yokai Watch event, it's based upon the Yokai Watch role playing video game and animated series. The video game was released on Nintendo 3DS on July 11, 2013, and involves looking for Yokai, spiritual creatures responsible for unexpected everyday occurrences, and befriending them via battles. Yokai can only be found with the Yokai Watch. The game was so successful that it became an animated series months later. The first Yokai Watch episode was broadcasted in Japan on January 8, 2014, and shown in the United States on October 5, 2015. So, for our Final Fantasy XIV collaboration event with Yokai Watch, it starts on April 24th.
Players will be able to join in on the fun and get rare weapons, mounts, and minions, including Jibanya and Whisper mounts. To participate in this event, players will need to visit the poor healed youth at the steps of Ulda and begin the quest titled A Complete Game Changer. To begin this quest, players must have a level 15 character and complete one of the main scenario quests titled The Gridanian Envoy, The Oldon Envoy, or The Lomansan Envoy. After completing the questline, players will obtain a yokai watch and yokai medallion that can be later used to gather yokai medals from fates in Stormblood and Heavensward areas. Also, players can farm medals in Lanosia, the Black Shroud, and Thanalan. These medals can be exchanged for yokai with the wandering executive at the Gold Saucer. So, after collecting 13 yokai, you can acquire the yokai mount called the Whisper Go Mount. If players want to obtain yokai weapons, players must summon the yokai minion that is matched with its weapon. For example, to obtain the cane of the Shrine Guardian, players must have the Komasan summoned during fate battles and obtain legendary Komasan medals. If players collect 13 yokai weapons, you can acquire the second yokai mount called the Whisper A Go Go mount. Next, if players collect all 17 yokai weapons, you can obtain the rare Jibinyan couch mount. Lastly, if you collect all 17 yokai, you can exchange MGP points with Nohai at the Gold Saucer for the new Yokai Watch Framers Kit. It's an exciting event jam packed with rare items and an event you don't want to miss. This event will end upon the release of Patch 7.0 in late June. So, moving on to my last topic, the Final Fantasy 16 crossover event has already started, and players can visit the Neophyte Adventurer at the Steps of Ulda and begin the quest titled a land on fire. To begin this quest, players must be at level 50 and completed the main scenario quest, the ultimate weapon. Players will have a chance to get rare in-game items such as the Torgal mount, Torgal pup minion, the median costume set, the rare Clive Rossfield card, and rare Orchestrion rolls. Gamers will only need MGP points for the Clive Rossfield card and Orchestrion rolls. The other in-game items can be obtained from the quest line. This event ends on May 8th. So, that's all I have for my 16th weekly podcast. If you enjoy my podcasts, you can subscribe to my podcast channel on YouTube. Also, you can follow me on X, formerly known as Twitter, under Dynamist Ryan. I try to answer comments and questions found on my channels through my weekly podcasts. Feel free to post on my social media platforms and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time.